Hello, I am Austin Howard, otherwise known as the Old Man Mountain. Today I'm going to be focusing on military items from the First World War, Second, and all onward. I will not be wearing this uniform while it's a full video. I'm wearing this uniform as honoring to my great grandfather and as to all the veterans who sadly passed. May they all rest in peace. Enjoy the video. Like I had said in the beginning of my video, I'm no longer wearing the dress uniform because it is a dress uniform from World War II and it belonged to my great-grandfather. He had passed a few years back, so may he rest in peace. So like I said in the beginning of the video also, I'll be showing relics. First thing I would like to show you is two pictures, both of which have my great-grandfather. Both of these were, this was taken right after he left boot camp. And this was taken in France, 1944, with two other sergeants. All these were both shot and were printed by a camera during World War II, so they are very old. Next thing I'd like to show you would be an ammo pouch. This is the German ammo pouch, which you, which would hold stripper clips and, sorry, a, Shiver clips for their German Mauser rifles. Each pouch would hold together 30 rounds total. And I have an American one that's very similar right here, which would hold an M block clip, which I do have one, which would hold 8 rounds. These are dud rounds, so nothing to worry about. The M block clip would only hold 8, so no American. Each soldier would only carry one at two each. So the regular German soldier would have around 60 rounds for his bolt that rifle compared to the American, who would only have 32 additional rounds for their rifles. Next thing I'd like to show you is parts of the German rifle of which they use. This is the sight and what's left at the receiver of a German bolt action Mauser rifle. The, the German Mauser rifle was a magnificent rifle made by a terrific company. As you've seen me in videos before, I've worn this. This is a belt which the American foot soldier would wear to, help, to hold up their gun pouches as you saw earlier and equipment. The next thing I'd like to show you would actually be a medal. This is the ribbon, which the soldier would have be wearing instead of the medal, and this is the medal. This is a medal from East Germany, as you can see on the back. This is a was given to soldiers for good service. It was a very common medal in the East German, in East Germany. The next item I'd like to show you is what you've seen me in video, I've worn in videos before. This is a Luger holster. It was meant, it was created from the early 1900s to 1945, the last year of the war for Germany. This was called a Luger 9mm pistol, which was the German, the German's pistol, the German's main pistol until I believe 19 until the P-38 came had come out, which then that was adopted by the German forces. Next item I'll show you is a field, which is a garrison cap, which is from World War II. This is American, which will be worn on the head, like so. Instead of what you had saw me wear earlier. It, this was meant more worn by the regular soldier, which would be of the rank of private or sergeant, than, the off than unlike the officers who would be wearing the caps which you saw me wear earlier. Next item is some of my favorites. Bayonets. This is a German Gewehr bayonet, which does have remnants of blood, and sadly, it lost its tip during the war. But it is a beautiful bayonet with, not, which, with no rust, which is in beautiful condition. So, I have one which is in even better condition, which is a English Lee Enfield bayonet 
spike. Never use, no blood, no no sign of rust. This would just be on the end of the barrel and they would use this in the First World War, which both these bayonets are from, to take out cavalry. That's what its main purpose was. In some cases, soldiers would break the bayonet in half to make a short knife. Another knife I'd like to show you is one from Vietnam. This would be a private purchase of a soldier in the army catalogs for them. It was a per more like a utility knife that the soldiers would buy out of the bases. It's a really strong knife. It was this blade was made in the United States of America. And this blade actually came from my grandfather, who, fought, who was an officer during the Vietnam War. Though he was never shipped out, thank God. The next item I'd like to show you is even more metals and pieces of uniform. This metal was to say that you had fought in World War II, and it was basically what this metal was used for. It's a very simple metal. This one's not in the best condition. Then I have pieces of a German visor, which would be their officer's caps. Very easily you were able to find this. It's just basically made of zinc and aluminum, which was the main metals which the German military was using during the Second and First World War. Next, I'd like to show you it's a Russian Navy belt, which was produced during the Second World War. It's an, I've worn this as well. It's a nice leather belt. And it is different than other belts because it is looped together. It's not very common to see these belts anymore. Next item I'd like to show you is actually from the 101st Easy Company, which is a well-known Air Force, Army Air Corps unit, which my grandfather had fought with in the Battle of the Bulge, which is not able, which I don't believe there are any surviving members of nowadays, sadly. A pin, which one of the soldiers had worn. A Catholic St. William's pennant, which was worn by, I believe, their major, major winners. Another pennant, which was worn by one of their soldiers. I have more items. I just want to remind you, this is not all my stuff. This is just a small portion. The major symbol, the symbol of a major, which was worn by a major winner himself. And parts of the uniform, which were worn by the soldiers. And other materials, including... Cherokee pin, which was given to them after they left boot camp. Very hard to find these nowadays. And the pouch at which I took it out it came, was made in 1944. And the last item, and some, some consider the most scariest, a U.S. gas mask from World War II. You can still find these. They are very common to find. People would consider these scary because when you put them on, it it would not be safe for you to even put these on anymore because there is asbestos in the filters. A lot of veterans, you don't see them living much longer anymore since well, if they were in World War II or one because the filters in their gas masks were made of asbestos which can give you lung cancer after elongated exposure. Ah, well, it's about time for me to end up the video. I know the video is longer than my usual videos are. A little different, but I had to do this because of the anniversary of my grandfather's passing. So, well, I hope you enjoyed it. So if you like the video, like it. If you dislike it, please don't. And if so, please comment why. Uh, if you like what my channel does, please subscribe. And if you wish to see more of myself and my military gear, 
to subscribe also. So, till then again, and good night.